You know that like crypto land ad? Oh my god, no. <laughs> Do you think he fucks the coin afterwards? Okay. Just thinking uh, about that ad. <laughs> okay, anyway. enough enough. Uh, we're here to talk about SMT5 because this is a yearly tradition now that my work gets so incredibly soul-crushingly busy that I can't produce any uh, content, and so I have to make something off-the-cuff talking about mythology. <laughs> We're going to do one of those real hot mythology listicles that everyone's just going crazy for, and this time it's on the new big Shin Megami Tensei 5. That's that... That's that game everyone loves. Top I've only five ever played hottest Shin Megami Tensei characters. <laughs> I thought you were going to say top five hottest Shin Megami Tenseis. Well, I mean, um, it does mean like true goddess resurrection, so it's not like impossible. Eh. I've only ever played Shin Megami Tensei 4, and I've only played like maybe an hour of that game, so I am. I'm a total rube here i've played those personas and i know the demons but don't uh, don't say that we like persona the smt fans will get mad at us oh don't worry i would never say i like persona out loud (laughs) um but sam sam is our expert here sam has played through this entire game no i haven't and sam has played some of this game (laughs) and uh they've assembled well a lot of wonderful information also our resident mythology expert yeah i should probably get to what uh, we're burying the lead here so the premise of this video is uh i've been playing this videos game here for a while and i noticed that like every demon has a class i think it's called a race in game every demon has a race that it's filed under it's almost like a pokemon type is the best way that i'd uh, put it but it's not as straightforward, and every so often I found myself sort of like scratching my head over what things meant or why one demon was in one category as opposed to another. So I decided it would be fun to like look into that and kind of parse through all of the races and what they mean, because some aren't terribly straightforward. What it, what it really boils down to is these are mythological archetypes that mm-hmm. uh, each of the demons falls into. And Kyle, here's the surprise for you. I'm not going to be going down like the list here. I'm not doing these in order. Uh, instead, oh I've taken the 34 races and put them into seven subdivisions. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is just like me doing a list within a list, which is really like pleasing to my brain. Well, yeah, humans love compartmentalizing things. And if we can categorize the categories, we will. We categorize um, the categories. That's exactly what we're doing here. All right. So this is a surprise to me. In that case, uh, what is our first hyper category hyper category i love it our first hyper category is animals uh i decided to go with this first just because it's really straightforward what defines the hyper category they're animals you guys i know animals i know them from real world (laughs) i know them from real world as well and so like just to really really push this home the first one i'm going to talk about is snake Uh, the snake the famous snake snake race it's just snakes if it's a snake it's here If it's a snake god, it might be somewhere else, but if it's just a snake, it doesn't have legs, it just has one long body, it's here. I'm looking at some of these snakes. Some of them are not fully snakes, which I think is very interesting. We're blurring the lines between man and snake with Naga and Raja Naga. Defining characteristic snake. These are as snake-like as you can get with any of these demons, so I think it's self-explanatory. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a snake. We don't need to waste time here. (laughs) No, let's just fucking go for it. Let's talk about snakes more. Next up is Beast, which is a little more obscure, but there's a pattern inside there if you look. So Mm -hmm. these are animal-based creatures. They can be a singular creature or a species. And I want to define what I mean by that now. Uh, There are some figures in SMT that are... It's like one distinct being. Like you have Loki, for example. That's one person. There's not a species called Loki. Mm -hmm. But you also might have uh, something like a Kelpie, which there's not the Kelpie, there's Kelpies. Kelpies is a species of creature, a species of mythological folkloric figure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, anyway, the beast category is for creatures, either singular or species. It's both. Uh, The main factor here that I found was that it's almost always cats and dogs. There are a a handful of cats and dogs here. There is the... I know what your eyes are going towards right now when I said cats and dogs, because there's one thing in here that's a little, uh... There is there is a cat girl, which does fall under it, but I do, I do have to say there is one outlier. There is um, one outlier. 
there is one beautiful, beautiful outlier, and it- It makes me so mad. <laughs> we have Orobas here, which is a, a bipedal horseman. Love this guy. And I mean, I, I suppose there really is no way to categorize this creature other there than is. bestial. No, there is. Which okay, is why right. this is like, ugh, it makes me so mad because uh, Orobas is a figure from the Ars Goetia. Actually, let me mm-hmm. let me quick look up pronunciation for that because I'm Go going to be it. saying that more. He just wants to be a part of something. He showed up to the beast party and everybody was having a great time. He just wanted to get down and dirty with his bestial self. Ours, okay. Ours is correct. Mm-hmm. We're just geniuses. Can't help. Goetia. It's the Ars Goetia. Okay. Fuck, I said it wrong the first time. Now everybody knows that. Nah, that's fun. Anyway, so Ouroboros is actually a figure from the Ars Goetia, um, which is like the ranking of, I want to say it's like 70 something demons, 76 maybe. But it's specifically listing like marquees, princes, so and so on of hell. We'll talk about this more later. But there's a category for this already in SMT. There's a specific category for figures from the Ars Goetia. I don't know why Ouroboros is here and it makes me really angry. One thing we'll learn very quickly is that some of the placements are just kind of meh. You got as many demons as they do. They're just kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah, they'll also move around from game to game what their like classification is. That makes a lot more sense to me. What if Pikachu was just an ice type in the next game? (laughs) I want to see it. We got to move on because there's 34 of these and we've gotten through two. Let's go. (laughs) Okay, so next one up is uh, Avian, though I also want to talk about Raptor at the same time, just because there's a dichotomy there. They're very similar because, you know, Avian and Raptor both refer to birds. The Mm -hmm. distinction here is that Avian is for singular figures, whereas Raptor is for species. Okay. So for example, in Avian, you have Thunderbird, where it's not there are Thunderbirds, there's just the Thunderbird, Mm -hmm. as opposed to Raptor, where you have like, Mu Shuwu, which is not a specific person. It's a a type of creature. Yes. All right. And then the last thing in this category is Wilder, which this is kind of like an expanded beast zone. Uh, it's mostly for beasts that aren't cat or do- cats or dogs. It's, it's, it's the overflow. Mm-hmm. If it's a cat or a dog, it's a beast. If it flies, it's a raptor. If it's a snake, it's a snake. If it's anything else, it's Wilder. And yet, our horseman, so firmly I placed hate, within. I'm so mad at Oribas. We even have a, a horse-like demon here with the bicorn yeah. in the wilder category. So there is some plausible deniability there. You could absolutely move Oribas into this, but, but no. um, also shout out to Mothman, one of the, one of the greats. All right, so that's it for the first hyper category of animals. Okay. Up next is mythical creatures, which... Similar, though, these are things that are more based in magic than based on specific real-life animals. So first up, we have the classic fairy, which Mm -hmm. this is... It's your European fae folk. There's a really wide range here, but the fact that these are from European folk tales is going to be really important. This is species like Kelpies, like I said before, but it can also be individuals like Titania who isn't so much a folk figure because uh, she's based on the Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream. Okay. Um, but yeah, you have your your floaty fancy butterfly wing fairies as much as you do your murder horses here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You also have Jack Frost and Jack O'Lantern. Oh God, the yeah. The classics. Very, very remiss of me not to talk about them at all. <clears throat> Hee ho. Hee ho. You got to get that in there. So... The fact that they're from Europe is important because we also have inside this larger mythical creatures category, the Jirai. And this is comparable to fairies, but it's just the Asian version. It's sort of this catch-all category for magical uh, critters and little guys from Asia. Not quite monsters so much as little fanciful beings. <laughs> Generally benevolent or neutral more than malevolent. Okay, these are these are figures based in myth, uh, not so much uh, akin to like spirits or anything of that nature, right? Not like a yokai. Yeah, yeah, it's good you bring yokai up. If I were to draw distinctions here, I would say think of it love like you have your spirits, you have your monsters, and then you have your fairies. Okay, yeah, that makes a bit more sense. I also should bring up that each of these races usually has like a 
alignment, like chaotic, good, so on, evil. Mm -hmm. But I'm not getting into that because that's more like statistical data and I'm talking about mythology. (laughs) We got to go over their base stats. We got weaknesses. We got to list everything. Please no. I I don't have the energy for it. (laughs) That's why we're doing it. This is our con analysis on speed. We're just going ape. Our con analysis speed run. (laughs) All right. So next in mythical creatures, you have haunts. And this is one that's pretty straightforward. These are malevolent ghosts and spirits. More minor fiends than like your really big bad entities like Alice, for example, as she shows up in the SMT series. So this is like poltergeists and basic ghosts like that. Speaking of, I would like to just shout out the poltergeist from SMT5. This is probably one of the most designs I have ever seen in my life. (laughs) I I mean, like, it's it's odd because I want it to be something more, but also poltergeists are, you know, in actual myths and legends. They're defined by messing with stuff in a house, so I guess it would make yeah. sense for them to be a doll. I can't get into this. Go watch my uh, phasmophobia video. <laughs> this is me at odds with myself trying to go through these categories in any sort of efficient manner without getting bogged down talking about details. <laughs> it's just too much. It's too much for you to bear. Uh, become our Patreon patron. Become our patron on Patreon and then come into the Discord and ask me about mythological creatures. I'll tell you in just like heaps of paragraphs there. The box is always open. The box is always open. It is. I want to talk about them. All right. Uh, after that, we have Foul. I cannot stress enough that this is just like a derogatory category. If you're a gross thing, you get put in Foul. If you're just a minor gross guy, you're in foul. So this is slime, black slime, and the legion. This hurts my heart. <laughs> I I love these boys. They're just goo. And this game has just decided to dump all over them. I was thinking on what categories you and I would be. And my go-to was foul for you just because you love slime. But I don't I don't want I it to be in like the derogatory boys. way. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know what? It's foul in the chicken sense. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that would go under raptor, actually. Oh, <laughs> okay, all right, we have another uh, sort of like paired duo here, and this is Dragon and Drake, and these two gave me a lot of trouble because generally how I did my research for this was I looked at the category and I looked at everything inside of it rather than looking at explanations of them just because it's almost more informative for me to see what legends are grouped inside here than how SMT describes them. Mm-hmm. I, I did end up using those descriptions to inform this too, but... So Dragon and Drake gave me a lot of trouble because my first thought was, okay, this might be avian and raptor again. It might be dragons are singular entities, whereas drakes are species. That wasn't true though, because you have like Fafnir in Drake and that's just one single entity. And then I thought maybe it's a body type thing. You know, maybe it has to do with number of legs or wings because that's often a uh, major factor in dragon categorization. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't right either. So what this actually is, the dichotomy here is good dragons are dragons, evil dragons are drakes. Okay. Because these are, the line is very, very thin between the physical characteristics. My yeah. my brain was going to go to dragons have scales and drakes are everything else. <laughs> but yeah, good versus bad. Yeah, because hydras have scales. I suppose. I mean, you can maybe make the argument for proper dragons are in dragons, but I, I don't even think that works because you have like Quetzalcoatl, yeah. which has scales and feathers. And that's just like a basilisk, which also has scales and feathers. Anyway, the important thing is good dragons versus evil dragons. <laughs> good dragons versus evil drakes. Okay, next up is knight. Uh, this one is something that's a little like obscure at first. It had me wondering for a while, but it boils down to don't think about it too hard. It's monsters that are associated with the knight. Uh, so you've got your like succubi and incubi, which are specifically demons that attack at night. Um, but mm-hmm. you've also got things like the sandman. So not necessarily like evil, but just things associated with the night. Just like goth boys. They even yeah. have Black Frost in here, which, <laughs> yeah, this is the most goth a, a fairy could get. I think Black Frost is kind of mean, though, in canon. I forget. I forget. Is he a bad little guy? I think he's a bad little guy. Jesus. Well, he's giving these guys a bad name because you can't, you can't hate on Sandman. You can't hate on... I think he's ugly. I mean, he's just got a moon <laughs> for a head. He's just a little moon man. But he's in like a spandex red suit. Yeah, that's what he's like in real life, though. I've seen him. I know. You guys are good friends. I'm sorry for shit talking your friends. (laughs) Okay, holy. These ones are divine creatures, usually holy animals or holy creatures rather than human figures like gods 
or we'll get into the avatars of gods in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But these are divine spirits of protection and omen for the most part. I'm seeing a lot of beast type creatures here. Creatures that, I mean, the chimera, the the shisa, the the baihu, baihu, baihu. Yeah. So one way that I think about this is if these were people rather than animals, they would probably be more in the category of like where I put heroes or minor deities. Mm-hmm. But they're they're animals. They're animal based, even if they're divine beings, mm-hmm. uh, and they're specifically not gods. So into the mythical creature category they go. Mm-hmm. Smart. All right, that wraps up the mythical creature hyper category. So the last two have been very self-explanatory, I think. So. Yes. I'm curious to see where the next batch is going to go. These ones are actually pretty simple as well, though it starts to get a little more muddled here. The halfway point is where it gets real muddled. Okay, so next one is a very small hyper category called components. And this only has two subcategories, which are extremely limited. That's elementals and mitama. Each of these has four different uh, demons in it. And the whole thrust of them is that they are specifically parts that make up something else. In one case, it's your four basic elements of fire, water, earth, and air. And in the other case, uh, the mitama are a little more obscure, but uh, mitama represents emotional components of a human soul. So there's like happiness, uh, sadness. That's why they all have horny. a different... Uh, horny is one of them. I'm not kidding. Kushi mitama has that DreamWorks eyebrow. This guy is nasty. That's part of it, yeah. You're not wrong. That makes sense. I think it's called like passion or something. (laughs) There's also, I'm talking about these two together because they're very similar. They're just different takes, I guess, on a similar Mm -hmm. concept. In game, they are more useful for fusions than actually fighting on their own. So generally they're used if you want to really get granular and sweaty with uh, stats or if you're trying to fuse specific types of critters. Yeah, that makes sense. If you want your demon to be hornier, you get Kushimitama. (laughs) If you want your demon to be more earthy, you get Etheris. Earthus. Nice earthy, nutty tones in there. Gotta get that nut. (laughs) No. (laughs) Enough. This is the horniest category. We finally answered the question of uh, top five hottest SMT demons. Okay. The proper ranking. Next up is one of our wider categories, which makes sense considering the Megami in Shin Megami Tensei means goddess, Uh, but this is gods. We'll get into goddesses later. So just starting off, very easy, deity category, very straightforward. Uh, It's gods from non-central mythologies, which I want to explain what I mean by non-central mythologies very, very quickly here. I mean non-central to the SMT franchise because SMT really draws from uh, Judeo-Christian legends. Mm. And so anything with Judeo-Christianity as its basis gets its own category, um, just because it has kind of a different place within SMT lore. Mm -hmm. So these are deities from, you know, Egypt, from Hindu mythology, from these are Nordic gods. It's kind of both a catch-all and an overflow category, though more the former than the latter. A lot of the races in the hyper category of gods, you could switch a lot of them out between different areas. There's also so much mythology that goes with each of these figures that, you know, you could, you might see Thor as a fury. That'll make more sense later. Yeah. All right. After this is War God, which once again, this is something that the definition of it is vague. I I personally think the War God category is kind of unnecessary. These are gods of weapons, heroic gods, gods that are specifically war gods. Not everyone here is even like specifically a war god. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And a lot of these could be worked into the uh, deity or fury category, in my opinion. But, you know, sometimes it's not bad to atomize a little bit. How do we feel about Neko Shogun? He's just a little guy and he'll kick your ass. Is there any mythological basis there or is he really just a little guy? There's potentially a mythological basis. I I do have to out myself and say I don't know the specific mythology behind every single creature in the SMT franchise. I know a lot of them. Which is fair. There's a lot of them, so... Let me... Let me quick go on Wikipedia and see what I can find here. Neko Shogun is a define uh, Neko Shogun is a divine general in the image of a cat. Originally, he was a Chinese general who conquered Vietnam. Mao Shengshu. Mm-hmm. The people decided to dedicate a temple to him and worship him as a god. However, due to the surname Mao sounding very similar to the Chinese word for cat, the temple was accidentally misnamed. Oh my god, this rocks! 
This is actually pretty cool. I like this. The Temple All right. of General Mao became known as the Temple of General Cat. The Temple of General Meow. Temple of General Meow. Meow. All right, enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, War God category has justified itself with Neko Shogun alone. See, isn't mythology wonderful? You learn something new every day, folks. Exactly. Okay, Kunitsu. So the, this is specifically Japanese deities, which makes a lot of sense that they get their own ca uh, category on two levels. First of all, this is a Japanese game. Second of all, they've got a huge pantheon. Other than that, there's really not much to say. These are just specifically Japanese gods. Yeah, these guys are just, these guys are just special boys. They are just special boys. And a lot of them are my friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Adabaki looks very good, very friendly. I recognize very him well. Next up in our gods category is Genma. And Genma are not quite full gods. I guess the best way to describe them are, for the most part, they're demigods or they're children of major gods or powerful spirits that just kind of scratch up at the bottom of godhood. Okay. A lot of these people are kind of Hercules-esque where they're, they've are they got some of that divinity, but they're best known as folk heroes. Um, oh, okay. The type that use their, you know, half divine blood to help normal humans. These are generally, generally very benevolent figures. And is there like a specific country of origin or is this really just like pan-religious, pan-mythological all across the board? This one is pan-mythological because you have a lot of, uh, you have like Kurama Tengu, which are the really high-ranking Tengu that are mm -hmm. from Japan, but you also have uh, Kukulain, Chukulain. I'm sorry, it's it's Celtic. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> which is fair. Um, okay, so it is, it is every, all of the little demigods or folk heroes, people of Not all divine... of the folk heroes. I do want to make okay. that distinction. But yeah, the very divine heroes and demigods is how I'd, how I'd put it. Mm-hmm. And after them, we have Avatar, uh, the last airbender. <laughs> so he's up there. We got Aang. We got we Aang. We got Korra. Avatar is one that gave me trouble for a long time. This was actually the last category because the first time I looked at it, I was like, I don't understand what's happening here. Yeah, this is an interesting split. Yeah. So what this is, uh, it becomes a little more parsable when you translate the Japanese title Shinju, which translates to divine beast. These are gods in beast form or beast gods. Okay. Gods so that just separate, are beasts, not gods of separate beasts. Separate from our other category, which was more just bestial divine creatures, but not gods per se. These are specifically gods. Yeah. For example, Shiza are some of my favorites. They're those little dog statues that you put. I guess they're not dogs. They're Shiza. They're the little statues that you put outside entrances and there's the one that welcomes in spirits and the other that like scares away bad spirits they're they're a species is how i categorize them rather than a specific duo okay you also have anubis here who is mm -hmm. a beast and a god everybody knows a a boob anubis jackalhead a boobis <laughs> i have to edit that out <laughs> okay next up is fury and I actually find this category very interesting, even if it's a bit of a hodgepodge. It's definitely a s obscure, but the category or the race is pulled together by suffering and despair. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. These are gods that are destroyers or embodiments of death or suffering, but they're not inherently evil. For example, we have my boy Dionysus here, which if you watch the Hades video, you'll know that Dionysus is not just a god of party and good times. Dionysus is both an earth god and a god of wine. So that's everything that goes with wine, the good times, as well as the like suffering wine can bring both emotionally and physically. Mm, mm. <laughs> Sufferer gods, not sufferers, but gods of suffering. Gods of the bad times. Gods of the bad times. And then we have one more in the gods category. And this is actually my favorite one because it's incredibly interesting. This is Vile. Okay. On the surface level, when you look at Vile, these are kind of, they come off as these like evil, powerful beings, these really intimidating, terrible figures. You've got like Pazuzu, you've got Bahamut, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What actually defines all of these things is that... These are gods that have fallen out of favor or have been vilified when other religions took over. Like if you look into Pazuzu and Bahamut, for example, they were not originally like evil symbols of witchcraft and death and curses. They were just, you know, part of a pantheon. They were just dudes. But, you know, as Christianity took over regions, they were turned into these like dark demonic figures. This is very interesting. Okay, so as opposed to the foul, which are just guys that we're shitting on, Vile are different gods 
that have just been shit on by the world. Yes. These are guys who have really gotten a bad name because of the other major faiths. Yes. Just vilifying them. Thus the name Vile. Yeah. Exactly. The Mishiguji, for example. Originally, these were like sex gods that you could pray to to have a better time. Nice. But then they were originally cast aside and rewritten as vile things that only undesirable people would pray to. Mm. So, you know, there's sort of that bastardization of these gods. I think it's a really interesting category. These guys have gotten a bad rap. Exactly. And that is the end of our mainline gods category, which takes us into my, my favorite hyper category, which I've named Girls' Night. <laughs> <gasps> Girls' night. All right. I can imagine what one category is going to be in this. <laughs> yeah. So this was actually born of like the first time I started talking about and analyzing these different demon races. I was super confused why there's femme, lady, and Megami, which once again, Megami means goddess. It feels like there should be a lot of overlap between those. But once again, if you actually look closely, you will discover some cool and insightful things. <laughs> so who's up first for our... Our girl's name. Femme, because Lady and Megami are much more closely related. Okay. Femme is not just girls. This is this is the misogyny archetype. Nice. <laughs> so unfortunately, like, the thing about folklore and mythology is it's not, like, nice and benevolent across the board. Sometimes people had fucked up cultural leanings and such. Uh, you know, like how Greece was super, super misogynistic. And so history was not a good time for women. <laughs> And so the destructive women archetype is one that comes up in a lot of mythology. Like, look no further than just the witch. The witch as in its, like, purest, so to speak, form of, like, evil woman who's a spinster living out in a shack and might eat children or just generally do mean things to people. Those guys are nasty. Yeah. They won't They won't get married. They won't get married. Ugh, how dare they not Ugh. bear children gross like that's basically it i also want to clarify this isn't me saying that smt is being misogynistic they are being very true to like how legends and such work this is a very common thread that comes up a lot yeah these guys are just the messenger if you want to go to the semantics you got to go all the way back to the myths that created them yeah exactly and so this is where you have things like mermaid a destroyer woman who sings and lures men to their deaths you know how dare they you've also got cleopatra <laughs> who is <laughs> all my homies hate cleopatra all my homies hate cleopatra a real person who has been very much like deified post-mortem you know into this weirdly folkloric figure but well the real cleopatra was kind of just a good ruler the image we have of cleopatra now the folkloric image is one of like decadence of lust of just you know all those how how dare a woman be enjoying herself this much no one ever talks about the policies that she enacted everybody just about like the visual yeah yeah for for example another thing you could probably put in the femme category is succubi mm -hmm. they make more sense in night because then they can be with the incubi too sounds like they're hanging out i hope they're having a good time everybody's having a good time all these demons just hang out after work yeah yeah this is their friend groups it's their friend group they have like a whatsapp group chat <laughs> <laughs> they haven't figured out discord yet they'll get there Okay. Uh, so who's next? Lady and Megami are next. Both of these categories are for goddesses, but there's a very small distinction. There is a lot of overlap here. Best I could find, the best way to sort these is Lady is mother goddesses and Megami is other major female deities. Mm -hmm. So mother goddesses are their own subdivision of mythology, which is more or less right what it says on the tin. They're the great mothers. Yeah. You've got, like, Demeter, for example. Demeter. Demeter. Whichever. <laughs> Though she's yes. not in here in SMT5 because they did her real dirty. Yeah, so she's been moved. But in previous games, Demeter was a lady as opposed to a Megami. Was she? I have no idea. Yeah, she was. Well, in one game. But now she's a Megami. One demon, Hariti, is uh, her myth specifically has to do with uh, being somebody who went from eating children to caring for children. <laughs> Ooh, quite the art. And then more in Megami, you have... Sorry, my eye went straight to Demeter and I just had to... Uh. <laughs> it's hard not to. I know. She really is the odd one out here. Her design's so bad. You have Artemis, who... Artemis famously one of the uh, virgin goddesses of Greek. She was not bearing any children. She's more your goddess classic, whereas the ladies are goddess specific in that mother goddess. Yeah. That finishes up Girls' Night. 
And we're moving on to heaven and hell, which is what I was talking about before with Judeo-Christian mythology featuring very heavily and having a very specific role within the lore of SMT. There's a lot of angels I've seen and a lot of devils. Indeed. So first up, we have another bonded pair here of divine and fallen. Both of these are very straightforward and well-defined. They're such neat categories and it makes me really happy. (laughs) Define is just, these are specifically the order of angels from Christian mythology. You're like seraphim, your cherubim, your principalities, powers, stuff like that. It's just those. On the other side, the other side of the coin here is the fallen. These are the noble demons of hell, the ones from the Ars Goetia. Uh, So Mm. these are princes, generals, marquis, and the like of hell. They're all listed in in a very nice order. Both of these are just like the cleanest, most clear-cut categories. You gotta give them points. They got one thing extremely well. Also, shout out to Decorabia. Decorabia. Yeah, shout out to Decorabia. Sean would be mad at me if I didn't. (laughs) We have one more category, which is Herald. Mm -hmm. These are also angels, but these are like the big boy angels. This is like those named angels like Michael, Gabriel. I'm not looking at a list here. I'm just trying to remember angels from Christianity, even though I'm not Christian. <laughs> Gun to your head. Start listing. <laughs> uh, they got Medi- Metaton from uh, Undertale in this. <laughs> Raphael from the Ninja Turtles. They have Sand Dolphin. Uriel from our campaign. <laughs> yeah, Uriel from D&D. They got all the grades. So last category is legends, and I have to admit this is a bit of an overflow or catch-all category, just because that kind of thing is hard to avoid, especially with SMT and how obscure and double-dipping a lot of these myths can be. But they tend towards singular figures. There are some species in here. A lot of them are more intelligent. You know, they're not beasts. They're not animals. But... They're also all over the place. Mm. So the first two in here are another pair, Brute and Jockey. And both of these are defined by like overwhelming power. You kind of get that with the name Brute, you know? It's when a monster or a figure is just known for overwhelming force and aggression. Though Brute specifically, not explicitly evil. Brutes are the good guys and the neutral guys. So Mm -hmm. you've got Oni in here, for example, which while sometimes demonized, they're also overall neutral. They're just doing their own thing. You've got Shiki Oji which while incredibly powerful, being Shikigami, they are inherently serving somebody, usually on Myoji, which are good guys, Mm -hmm. generally speaking. So you compare this with then Jockey, and Jockey is specifically the evil version of this. These guys look like nasty boys. These are the really powerful nasty boys. Got a lot of skeletons in the bunch. (laughs) You've got Macabre, which is literally the portrayal of death from like Renaissance era art. Yeah. You've got Rixasha, which are Buddhist demons that punish sinners, which is using a lot of Judeo-Christian terms to uh, explain what I mean, but you get the point. As SMT is wont to do. Yeah. (laughs) SMT wants us to do this. Gun to my head. (laughs) So that's Brute and Jockey. They're really general categories. They are wide. Next up, we have Tyrants. Mm -hmm. Tyrants, as the name implies, these are evil and destructive leaders or rulers. They're usurpers or they're people with their eyes on the throne, like Loki, for example. You also have very high-ranking members of the Ars Goetia here. These are specifically like the demons in the single digits from that listing. So they get a bit more distinction than the Fallen. These are like high chancellors of hell. Stuff like Belphegor, Belphelgor, yeah. Moloch, Abaddon. Abaddon, my favorite. Abaddon. Abaddon is associated with bugs, so that's my favorite. I'm something of an Abaddon myself. Something of an Abaddon myself. <laughs> and also King Frost. Yeah, King Frost, big boy. He's got to go in the bad guy category because he's a king, you know? Yes, Fuck but also monarchs. because like if you read the in-game description, they say that has the power to freeze over the world, but is like too ignorant. <laughs> Sweet. I'm glad that the Frosts have just gone to shit. Hee-ho. I want to make like a political cartoon that um, is criticizing King Frost. <laughs> Tear this motherfucker apart. Uh, also, m- Oh, boy. Do we we got to mention. Do we? Do we have to we mention? Gotta, we can we can specifically censor. Him. <laughs> we can we can just erase him. In post, I'm list. going to put a sound effect over every time we say. <laughs> so now no one will ever know. Audio censorship. Okay, next up are the Yoma. Once again, this is another very wide category. These are magical beings or minor divine beings with no particular leaning or action. These are all species as well, rather than distinct entities. These could have been put in another category, 
but the tendency towards divine things here made like the uh, Valkyrie, for example, made me think they should be here in the legends. Though, honestly, <sighs> I'm second guessing myself because you've got like Kapatangu and Mandrake, which really feel like mythical creatures. But then you've got Valkyrie, which, you know, those are specifically kind of like angels within Nordic mythology. This is like the kids table of the legends <laughs> category. Everybody else who is kind of in their own league just kind of goes over here. God, that's such a mean way to put it, but you're right. That's what it feels like, honestly. Yeah. You could absolutely move the Valkyrie up to one of the other. You could move it up to any of the girls' night, probably. You could move it up to Femme. Well, I they're not no, exactly they're, vilified. They're not destroyer women. They're they're yeah, okay. benevolent. It's tough. These are it's it's not easy categorizing every single demon in SMT. Yeah, this is why I said right out front, uh, Legends category is kind of the overflow. There there's a yeah. very loose description here. Okay, so next up we have Kishin, not the Soul Eater kind. It's actually very different from Soul Eater. Mm -hmm. These are divine warriors and leaders. They're kind of like a benevolent equivalent to the tyrants. Okay. These are leaders that are good at their job. I mean, we've got Thor here. Thor is a very well-known uh, mythological figure. We've also got a, a group of what appear to be four Zokoten, Komokuten, Yes. Jiko Kuten. These were all mythological, like, military leaders. Yeah. So they they are absolutely, yeah, they're the, uh, the the best of the best when it comes to the tyrants. The cream of the, the crop. The good boys. The cream of the corn. Oh, I want some cream corn now. Don't test me. I am from the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, almost wrapping it all up, we have Fiend. And I really like the Fiends. Now, Fiends are... A bit of a strange category. You could describe them as like deathly or evil spirits. Oftentimes they're very skeletal in nature. They're highly inauspicious and dangerous, but they're also generally specific figures, which distinguishes them from haunts. These aren't just ghosts. These are like, you know, you've got the four, uh, what are they called? You know, those like apocalypse riders from Christian mythology, the guys on the horses, those, war, famine, death. Those those man on the horses, those, those men horse man. The <laughs> yes. The four horsemen, the white, oh, red, God, black, and just pale the four riders. Horsemen? God damn it. No, it's all good. Listen, um, we're recording this in the first place because I don't have enough energy <laughs> to think because work is hell. I work in healthcare. <sighs> Omicron's happening for those listening in the future. It's bad. Oh, all right. Anyway, fiends. But yeah, these are very like deathly figures. They're all kind of, in a sense, appropriations of the concept of like the Grim Reaper. Yeah. Their own flavor. And then you kind of have Alice, which is an outlier, but she is said to specifically be a spirit taking the form of a girl in the game. And SMT, like, I, I feel this big fondness for Alice from these games. She doesn't, I mean, she's based on the Lewis Carroll character, so she doesn't have a specific mythology, especially not one that's, like, malevolent and dark as she's portrayed. But I think okay. SMT just really likes to have fun with Alice and let her be, like, the fiend. Now, Alice Alice is a reoccurring demon in SMT. This is not a new demon oh, yeah. for five. Yeah, Alice okay. has been all over the place. Okay, okay. She's always very good at dark skills. Eh, her, her she's, uh... <laughs> Her special skill is called Die For Me. Hell yeah, good for her. This is Alice's Wonderland. This is Alice's Wonderland. We're all living in it. And I think SMT and Atlas would be proud of us for ending on her. There is technically one more category in SMT5, but I'm not even going to talk about it for those of you wondering, because it's literally just one demon and it's just a spoiler. It's just a spoiler. I'm like looking through the list trying to find it. I'm trying to spoil myself. It's at the very end of the list if, if, that you're looking the at. The last one. It's not even in this one. I mean, maybe in the other lists. I could send it to you, but if you ever play, it'll just be a spoiler. Found it. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's just I a spoiler. I clicked on the page and it was totally a spoiler. All right, sweet. Uh, but yeah, so that's, these are the demons of SMT5. Semen, memen, teman, What? Demon. Shin that's Megami what... Tensei Vemen. Okay, you were saying SMT. I thought you were just talking about cum. As I am wont to do. Well, I think that's the perfect place to end our analysis. Thank you all Wait. for- Wait. What? I, I, w last thing. Who is your favorite demon in SMT5? Oh, oh, Kyle, that's such a- That's like asking what your favorite Pokemon is. That is tough. Mm, I really have a soft spot for the angels. I like all of the angels. I really like Lilum too. I kind of want to cosplay Lilum, but it's a bad idea. I don't know if, go look up Lilum's design from SMT for me, please. And you'll understand why it's a bad idea. Clicking on it. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> a tougher one. 
that one's a bit trickier. Yeah. I can tell you a design I don't like. One of my least favorite designs is Abaddon's because he's just a big gross mouth and I think Abaddon's a really interesting character, but no. Who's your favorite SMT demon? Poltergeist. <laughs> Stick it so to your guns. Man. I like what they got going on here for this guy. I think that's a good choice. All right, in that case, thank you all for uh, bearing with me while I try and make a real video. I'm sorry, I'm very overworked right now. All videos are real videos. All videos are real videos, exactly. That's why after this, I'm posting Boss Baby Cruel Angel Thesis. Yes, and I'm posting cringe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Digital Dream Club, follow us, like, subscribe, tell us what we you thought. We got a Twitter, we've got a Discord, but if you want access to the Discord, you need to sub on Patreon. We've got one of those. If you like our stuff and you want to pay us to make more stuff, because we're human beings living in the real world, and, you know, time costs money. Sometimes I would like a, like a little chocolate treat. Exactly. You can pay for us on Patreon and we'll make more cool stuff. We've got incentives. And other than that, you know, we're human beings. We also got Twitters. <laughs> you can follow us online. You can find us there. You can find it where we live. You can dox us. Don't do that. I'm at Reversal Sun, and I won't tell you my address. And I am at King underscore Cheesy, I think. I have no idea. I forget my Twitter Kyle. all the time. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming. Thanks for playing SMT. 